Welcome back. We're glad that you've joined us for our series on Lift Up the Trumpets. Jesus is coming again. This is such an important topic that uh, we want to just delve right in to what the Lord has for us. We had a really uh, wonderful study on the previous one where we can understand better the major purposes that Jesus has put in the scriptures about trumpets. Mm -hmm. Before we begin, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that you are a loving God, you are a kind God, that you give us special warnings and a special call with trumpets, and that we can open our ears to hear them and to hear your voice, and your voice is like a trumpet also, mm -hmm. and we're just thankful for that. And Lord, we want to come in harmony with your will and to um, be wise virgins, to wake up, to hear that the bridegroom cometh. And we also want to be watchmen that are going to say, the bridegroom cometh. And so, Lord, just help us to be like that. Just uh, forgive us of all of our sins and all of our um, Laodicea and just wash us clean and new for you. And just pour out your spirit as we study into these trumpets now. In Jesus' name, amen. So last time we had a good time to review how um, God's people, that when they had come to a time where judgments were falling because they had passed some of uh, the probationary line there on some things and God wanted to call them back, that he would blow trumpets to call his people. And that he doesn't just blow trumpets for his people, he also blows trumpets for all the nations. He loves mm -hmm. all the nations of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, even if they don't follow him, he's still reaching out and calling them. And I just love mm -hmm. that example you gave of, of Nineveh. And I, I just, I'm just so surprised that they responded. <laughs> it really is amazing. And I think maybe it's the only example of a nation mm -hmm. that wicked that actually responded. Wouldn't that be awesome if in the end times that uh, whole nations came to God? That would be a wonderful story. Uh, prophecy doesn't seem to show that, that that will be taking place, but we know that many people will respond. Amen. Individuals will respond to the call of the trumpets to, to join in that last swell of the loud cry and God's last day message. So <clears throat> as we think about that, I'll just show the picture again here where we saw the nations that uh, each one of these had probationary time, uh, Babylon and Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome, and, um, and also at the feet there'll be a probationary time there and a final fall when Jesus comes again. <clears throat> but um, Carol, maybe you could read that quote that talks about how before God implemented this plan, which I, pl I believe is plan B. I mm. believe this was plan B, mm -hmm. where the other nations ruled the world after the time of Daniel, when they mm -hmm. were taken into captivity. But I think that God meant for uh, Israel to be a world leader throughout our whole time of mm -hmm. earth history. Mm -hmm. And so that was their, the original plan of that special nation but because they were not able to respond to God's call, um, there was a change in that plan. But maybe you could read that quote for us. Well, I like uh, what you were saying there that um, the Israelites were chosen for a specific reason. Of course, they are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. and then the 12 sons. Um, but it was not just for their family only. It was that God wanted a family um, that would spawn the, uh, the, a, a nation that would be, be big enough to evangelize the other nations. They were to be the salt of the earth. And he placed them in Jerusalem where it was a crossroads where people would come th through from the other nations on their way to Egypt, different things. Um, and um, he wanted other nations to be saved. That was, that was mm -hmm. the point. And in the end, of course, um, the, 
the Israel of God will be a composite of all nations. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the, the point of uh, the truth is what he wants to spread to every person on earth. Um, and so they were chosen to be evangelists, but that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they would see the licentious um, worship of the nations around them, and instead of evangelizing the other nations about their God, even though God would do these huge miracles, you know, parting the Red Sea and on and on and on, even though uh, the Israelites had all those wonderful things that God had given them, and then the sanctuary and the truths that they had, they would become uh, lured away to the licentious, exciting um, uh, worship of the nations around them, and they would begin to worship their gods, and the sanctuary would um, just be forgotten for mm -hmm. generations sometimes. And then somebody would bring them back and so forth. But um, the purpose of Israel was to be evangelists to the other nations and win them to God. So this is a quotation uh, from Ellen White's writings again, and this is from a, a book called Education, uh, page 179. The crown removed from Israel. Now, I am going to actually read that. Uh, this is a quote from Ezekiel 21, 26, and 27. Um, Ezekiel 21, 26 and 27. Well, I'm going to start with 25, actually. O profane and wicked prince of Israel, whose day has come, in other words, whose probation has ended. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to be a leader of, of God's people, but you were not whose time of, of punishment has reached its climax. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Take off the turban, remove the crown. It will not be as it was. The lowly will be exalted and the exalted will be brought low. A ruin, a ruin, I will make it a ruin. It will not be restored until he comes to whom it rightfully belongs and to him I will give it. And that, of course, is referring eventually to Jesus who was the, he was uh, from the Jewish nation, but he um, was the one that r was to come as God himself or God's son and rescue all of the nations. So, uh, so this says, the crown removed from Israel passed suc successively to the kingdoms of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. God says it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it to him. Again, from Education, the book called Education, page 179. And so here is a, is a prophetic statement about how um, because the nation didn't respond, God allowed people from his nation, uh, Daniel and uh, the three friends and so forth, to go to these other countries to eventually evangelize them mm -hmm. and uh, rise up and, and that, that the other nations where his people went found out the truth simply because they were taken off to the other nation to evangelize them. And the crown removed went to Babylon and that is because they were given a probationary time mm -hmm. to accept the truth from these Israelite people that now lived within them. And they were uh, given a time um, of, of um, probation. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar finally did uh, accept the true God. Mm -hmm. But his grandson, I believe it was anyway, Belshazzar, um, did something really terrible. And he took the, uh, the vessels that came from the sanctuary and had his, took them from where Nebuchadnezzar had uh, placed them and took them to, to um, drink wine with all of his concubines and his wives and the, all the, the great men of Babylon 
and almost like in your face kind of a thing, uh, took those vessels and drank from them and that was when their probation came to an end. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. And, uh, and as you were talking about how the witnessing, you know, if they weren't going to witness on their own, then then as captives, they were going to witness for God and spread the message. He sees those people everywhere that mm -hmm. don't know and, mm -hmm. and uh, how Daniel was able to witness during the time of Babylon and also of mm -hmm. Medo-Persia with mm -hmm. Dari King mm -hmm. Darius was yes. the silver kingdom. Mm -hmm. And also Esther was in the silver kingdom mm -hmm. with Persia and of Shushan and and how her people mm -hmm. there and Mordecai were able to make such a difference in mm -hmm. these worldly kingdoms. Even though it was a second um, plan, God still uh, can do glorious things mm -hmm. when we respond and uh, move forward for the mm -hmm. restoration of lost time. Mm -hmm. and, and I was also thinking about how Jesus, when he came, that uh, before, as far as like the Israel passing that baton over to these other nations, so to speak, um, how Jesus was that perfect example of how the witnessing was supposed to take place. He and given that uh, example. And they were in the fourth kingdom. That's true, um, uh, right there, because Jesus was in the legs of iron time uh, with the Roman soldiers that mm -hmm. uh, were at the crucifixion and the cross is from the Roman. So um, trying to blend those nations uh, into, mm -hmm. into the place where they could hear about the truth. And um, I'm sure many Roman guards were touched and converted mm -hmm. because of Jesus' example. So, so anyway, those are some important concepts as we think about these trumpets are about warning nations. That's one of the huge responsibilities of the trumpets. And so I have a question. Is there trumpets that uh, the Bible talks about that would could apply for our day here uh, at the end of time. And I would like to invite each one of you to take a look at the book of Revelation because <clears throat> Revelation is the book for our last day people. And it gives a, a historical view of uh, the uh, Revelation. All of Revelation gives a historical view of the Bible and the and history, um, but it also brings things right down to his last day people and everything that's going to happen before Jesus comes and even after he comes. And so this book is, this last book of the Bible is very important. And lo and behold, there's a whole section about trumpets. I don't think that's coincidental. I think the Lord had something in mind there. And so if we could uh, turn to Revelation chapter 8, um, it talks about the seventh seal. There's lots of interesting things in Revelation. There's seven churches. Seven is a special number to God. Um, this, there's the seven seals, seven trumpets, seven plagues. Maybe there might be some others. But anyway, um, seven thunders or just mm -hmm. seven thunders. Seven thunders yes. in chapter 10. So mm -hmm. here in the seventh seal, um, which I think is kind of interesting how... Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's an end time application, I feel, mm -hmm. as these trumpets come out of the seventh seal. I think there's mm -hmm. more light on that. So anyway, uh, we'll look at uh, chapter 8, verse 1. It says, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And then it says, another angel had a golden censer. And so then we see <clears throat> there some of the work that the angels do is like priests there at the altar of incense. And then verse 6, it says, Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. So it's just neat how in Revelation also there's so much sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And we know that trumpets were a part of the sanctuary. We know that there's the Feast of Trumpets in the yearly sanctuary cycle. Mm -hmm. And so now we have seven trumpets, not just one, but seven. And so I think there's some great significance about these 
trumpets mm -hmm. that are in Revelation. Now, just like we do have for some of the other sevens in Revelation, um, many scholars have done a lot of research here, and um, I've had the opportunity of doing some study uh, in a number of books about the seven trumpets, and um, there's quite a body of scholars that have uh, presented uh, a very important view of the historical, what we would call the historical trumpets, where it goes over the long time period and, and helps us to see a really nice pattern of what these seven trumpets represent over the history um, and how it matches and ties in with some of the other sevens in Revelation. And I think that it's a very exciting study that, mm -hmm. um, that we should uh, look into. And here in our series, we will probably just kind of do more of a brief look at how these trumpets relate historically, but it's a very important part of our understanding of the seven trumpets. Well, it's a part of uh, the Advent movement. It had a lot to do with uh, them searching out um, where are we in time. That was um, the message that was brought to the Advent people of mm. helping them to see that something very important was about to happen. Mm -hmm. And that study we will not do uh, in this series. We can do it in another series perhaps, but in this particular series, we're talking about uh, the, the way that the trumpets have been throughout history and then applying them to our day. But the, uh, the message of the seven trumpets um, were very important to our, to our forefathers, as uh, Seventh-day Adventists, to our forefathers, because the seventh trumpet mm. is the coming of Christ, and when Christ takes his, his, um, his kingdom, as it mm. says in uh, chapter 11 of Revelation, um, verse 15, this is the seventh trumpet, so we're going to start backwards. <laughs> mm. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and mm. of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Mm. So in the Bible, we in the New Testament, it talks uh, uh, several times, numerous times about the last trump or the last trumpet that will be sounded when Jesus comes. That's when he comes to, and the kingdom of the world and all these various kingdoms that have ever been, especially in Daniel's vision uh, and a dream of, the, of, the, of Nebuchadnezzar, shows that in the days of these kings, Jesus will come, or these kingdoms, and they will all fall when Jesus comes. So this is the last trump, or the last trumpet of Revelation, which we find in Revelation 11. So then we would say, all right, if this is the last one, we could almost count backwards, mm -hmm. you know, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. But uh, we're not going to do that this time. We're going to do it uh, next time. Um, but this time I think that we should maybe go forward with mm -hmm. how our forefathers saw it which gave them so much impetus in believing that Jesus was coming in their day, yes. in their time, and that they were to give that message around the world, and they did. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting that even that seventh trumpet, again, is about nations and kingdoms mm -hmm. and Christ's final kingdom. It is, and absolutely. So I think that that's very yes. important. And as mm -hmm. they, uh, the scholars studied those seven trumpets, they talked about nations all as well mm -hmm. and yes. the fall of the different nations with each one of those historical trumpets. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to, to unpack that a little bit with the, the first four I know that you've uh, shared with us that there's a continuity of the purpose of the first four trumpets. Um, the, the, uh, in just a few words, the um, scholars in the 1800s that were looking at this, 
uh, noticed various things in scripture and things were passed on down, which we will get into um, next time a little more. But they saw um, the fall of Rome as being in four stages uh, because there were uh, various um, other smaller groups that would come in and and uh, hit against Rome until it took four different stages for Rome to fall. And that was called the historicist method of seeing the trumpet. So in the first four was the fall of Rome. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then five um, was uh, the five and six uh, has historically throughout Protestantism and still is seen that way as the Muslims, the Muslim hordes that came through, Luther, and uh, I know of 25 different scholars through, Protestant scholars who have seen the fifth one as the Muslim hordes. Mm -hmm. And, and the um, holy wars with the and Catholic the holy church wars at that and the, time. And the, right, with the Catholic church and so forth. And uh, the fifth and sixth, and then of course, the seventh being Jesus coming. Mm -hmm. So that's how they saw it, and they saw themselves right there at the cusp of the, the um, because Rome had already fallen, the Muslim hordes had already been there, and so they felt that they were the, the ones that would see Jesus come. So mm -hmm. it was a very important part of their understanding. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so once again, we see the nations right in there, whether mm -hmm. it's the, the, the Muslim nations, uh, the Roman nation, and mm -hmm. you know their judgments and all mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. is is right there in these prophetic mm -hmm. uh, interpretations of the seven trumpets mm -hmm. in Revelation that that are so special and so important. Well, I know that when you had shared this and you've written a book on the trumpets, uh, which is uh, very good. I wish I had that. Maybe next time we'll just bring that along and and show that uh, to everyone. And um, I just remember that early on when you were studying about the trumpets that I was having a hard time really understanding why they were important or why mm -hmm. to connect with them um, or anything about the trumpets. And I didn't understand, um, you know, why it would talk about Rome in the historical and, and some of the other nations. And, but I hadn't really done much study and I wasn't fully interested at that time, but years later then I went ahead and did this study of looking at all, all the texts about the trumpets and trying to see a pattern, trying to see what God is, uh, is sharing with us. And then I kept praying and I was saying, Lord, why Rome? What, what is the big deal about Rome? And, <clears throat> and all of a sudden, you know, I mean, we could just pull out anything. We could pull out any nation. We could just talk about anything. Why, why does it have to be Rome? What's so significant about that? And then it just, uh, in prayer, it just dawned on me so powerfully. Rome is all over Daniel and Revelation. <laughs> what do you mean? Why Rome? Mm -hmm. Rome is everywhere. And mm -hmm. I was um, a big student of Daniel. That's, um, I, I feel like I understand Daniel a lot better than Revelation. And I'm like, of course. And so I bring that picture back out again because it was like, Rome is this kingdom right here. This mm -hmm. kingdom right mm -hmm. here. And I'm like, okay, so the trumpets tie in then, the historical trumpets are grounded and rooted in our understanding of, of the prophecies of Daniel. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, this is really great. And then as I studied further and and studied into um, some of the, the historical um, books about it, um, something else emerged in my mind that was so powerful that these historical trumpets were taking a huge magnifying glass. And for those of you who understand how Daniel 2 then is magnified in Daniel 7, like a little magnification, uh, of this and it, to help us to understand better. So Daniel 7 makes things even clearer and then Daniel 8 makes things clearer and magnifies it bigger uh, so that we can understand all of the prophecies of Daniel. 
And so all of a sudden here, we now we have Revelation. I know I'm skipping over a whole lot really quick. But um, so now we have the trumpets in Revelation that are a magnification once again of what happened with Rome. What was going on, the nitty gritty details to make it clearer. And I think next time I can bring the, some of the other pictures mm -hmm. because we have some of these other pictures that uh, can magnify that for us. Um, Rome was the kingdom that Jesus lived under, that um, John was the one who wrote Revelation, and he was in the Iron Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so that was present truth for their day. It was the time where they were living and they were constantly, um, they were constantly asking, how long will it be until Jesus comes again? That was their big question. Here they thought, surely it won't be long. Yes. Oh, they thought they, in fact, Paul had to tell them it's not going to come in our day because Jesus coming is in far distant. And so that's where a lot of Daniel's vision is. He, because they're saying, how long, oh Lord, when will it be? Will you come back soon? And Paul had to say, he's not coming back in our day. It's going to be farther away. And I'm sure that was a disappointment to them. So it was very current. Rome was, was the, the main concept that they thought, and they didn't know that it was going to fall. Mm -hmm. They didn't, but this vision of Daniel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel, shows that it would break up and no kingdom would come after that, except the kingdom or the, the, um, the one that's not shown here, mm -hmm. and that's America. Mm -hmm. And America has its own place in history. Mm -hmm. It has its own um, story in Revelation. Mm -hmm. And that is what we want to take up next is because mm -hmm. America is a product of the Ten Toes. The Ten Toes represent Europe, the ten major kingdoms or uh, governments um, of Europe, which never were able to get together. They're still trying to get it together right now, you know. Yes. And the Bible says it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. it, but Jesus will come in the day when they're trying to get it back together. Mm -hmm. But the ten toes represent uh, America, and America is a composite of all these other kingdoms. Absolutely. And so everything will end in America. Yes. And so that is where we're going with our understanding. Right, because yeah. all the other nations, as they uh, pass their time of, of leadership and, mm -hmm. you know, even today, the different nations of the weak and the, and the strong, um, that the, the remnant of, that has come out of them mm -hmm. came to America to mm -hmm. start a Christian and a free nation mm -hmm. that God was hoping to, um, to show the world mm -hmm. how to have freedom, how to mm -hmm. have democracy. Mm -hmm. and, and all the nations in the world, I think, have been affected in many ways mm -hmm. because of showing what can happen when you set people free. Mm -hmm. You still have boundaries and laws and rules, but you set people free. And, mm -hmm. and the many nations have been affected by that. But of course, our nation um, has not maintained um, everything that we should have. And so we do see in Revelation further um, magnification. Just think of a little magnifying glass. Maybe I should bring one next time to help us to see how as we go through Daniel and then as we go through Revelation, things get bigger and clearer and more detail as we see all that's supposed to happen at the end of time. And it's just very amazing how the seven trumpets have a lot to tell us about mm -hmm. end time events and have a lot to tell us yeah. about getting ready for that seventh trumpet. Jesus is coming again. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get ready for that beautiful day? Trumpets are blowing now on the nations all over the world and for America. 
trumpets are blowing, saying Jesus is coming again. Amen. Let's get our hearts ready for him and, and, and share this message with the world. Let us be a part of the watchmen. We can even be a part of the trumpet blowers. Mm -hmm. Let's do our job to be ready for this last day work that Jesus has prepared for each one of us to do. If that's mm -hmm. your a desire, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you um, can solve all my mysteries in the Bible, even the trumpets, and help us to understand it better and to help us to see how these trumpets, even in Revelation, help to prepare us for the second coming of Christ and the seventh trumpet. And I just pray that each one of us will lay our lives down for you and not only in our daily walk with you, but to be willing to go through anything in the last days to uh, stand for you as did Gideon and his 300 men where they uh, broke the, the covers over their lights and they lit their lights for you and they blew the trumpets. Amen. They blew those trumpets Amen. and and you were able to do a mighty work. And we just pray that in these last days, we will be part of Gideon's 300, that mm -hmm. band that went all the way. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm.